Mazzy's here, and, and and you've all heard the Beatles versus the Rolling Stones. The Beatles versus the Stones. For literally a half a century, more than a half a century, 55, 56, 57, almost 60 years, there's been the thing. Beatles versus the Stones, Beatles versus the Stones. Well, in this video, the Stones definitely win. They're the ones that really kind of get to you and make you buy their music over and over and over again. This is a uh, overview of Rolling Stone compilations. Now, not all compilations are um, equal. Some are better than others and some are amazing. A lot of times they just give you those extra tracks thrown in. And the reason I'm, I'm making this video today is because I'm pulling together this collection uh, that uh, this gentleman reached out to me and literally there's a box and a half of Rolling Stones things and there's like multiple copies of several things and a few Stones comps that I knew about but had never seen. I don't have all these comps. In fact, I think as I go on here, I have a little uh, iPad presentation of some of the covers of the, some of the comps I do not have. And again, you know, greatest hits records are great. Now, having said that, I'm not counting live records as comps. There's a whole Stones bootleg series, like Dylan bootleg series and Beatles anthology, things like that. This is not about that. And some comps are very creative. I mean, I think I want to do a Beatles comp video later because obviously, you know, the Beatles were very protective of it. And then really until uh, a bootleg came out, a box set came out, they didn't do uh, the red and blue comps until that in 19, what, 73, 74, 73, I think it was. And that was great. They didn't do a, a greatest hits comp till Beatles 20. Anyway, let's save that for uh, the Beatles version. This is only the Rolling Stones version of comps, like too many friggin' comps. And uh, part of the blame, you might say, is to um, them leaving APCO, DECA, Alan Klein, who just took their records and just put a lot of uh, comps out and unreleased material with two extra tracks or a few things. And some of them, again, are good. Some are better than others. So. I'll start out with this in 1966. This was a DECA album, came out in London here. And 1966 was, it was pretty early to have a, a greatest hits record. Big hits, High Tide and Green Grass. All my friends, myself included, 1966, knew about this. Of course, you know, the Stones were around from what, 64? They made their first uh, record, right? I'm a Beatle guy more than a Stones guy. So if I get some of this wrong, you Stones guy, please correct me. Um, you Stones people, please correct me in the notes because I might get a little wrong and I'll admit it up front. But, in, you know, Satisfaction was 65. That's where we all jumped in head first and uh, went with the Stones. And 66 already, one year later, two years later after their first record, there's a High Tide and Green Grass. Uh, this had a little bit of a overleaf book inside, a couple great pictures and everything. And it's a great compilation. It has, it has all their hits of the time. It has uh, 19th Nervous Breakdown, Heart of Stone, Get Off My Cloud, Play With Fire, of course, Satisfaction, Tell Me. It's, just, it, it's a great comp. And again, everyone I know had this. So this is 1966. Now, 1967, this is a little different. This is 1967. This is Flowers. Uh, again, APCO. Uh, this is an American uh comp that came out that London put out in this country. And this is great because it had singles, it had a few B-sides, a few outtakes, and it's got a little feel to it that I quite like. I get for, so for 1967, this comp, it's not basically a hits comp, but it's an interesting comp uh, the Stones put out on London Records, American comp. Then, you know, we go a few years later to 1969, and of course, APCO continues we think like every like two years or something, there's something. Uh, this with this great Ethan Russell, uh, the photographer did this the photograph, also did Let It Be, same year, 1969, the Beatles Get Back session stuff. Uh, clever cutout cover that really made no sense. So this was, this is actually a sealed copy from this collection, uh, which I will be selling eventually. But um, Again, this has the later years, so it, it is a supplement to that. But it's a cool collection. 
Honky Tonk Woman, Ruby Tuesday, Street Fighting Man, Have You Seen Lover Baby? That's probably one of the older songs, Let's Bite the Night Together. But She's a Rainbow and Dandelion, Dandelion the single. So they add something. So again, the thing about comps and greatest hits comps is when they throw that little extra song to make you buy it. If you're an all-in person, there's one friggin' song you gotta buy, or maybe two if you're lucky, uh, to get get that extra song. You gotta buy the whole friggin' album. Uh, this is the world of vinyl back in the 1960s. Then in 1971, of course, you know, the Stones eventually leave APCO, leave DECA, sign their own label, a custom label with uh, Rolling Stone Records, put out Sticky Fingers, and uh, Hot Rocks comes out. Another fantastic comp. So this covers everything, um, the, the hits. So it really covers those first two uh, collections. Um, and it's a, it's a great comp. Again, you know, you got your photographs. Uh, this is one with the hype sticker. Uh, this, for some reason, later they put this sticker on. It was on every edition. I haven't seen uh, this in many years. My copy doesn't have the, uh, the hype sticker on it. So the Rolling Stones... But in 1975, you know, APCO had the rights. The Rolling Stones lost the rights to all their music. That's why there's been a million comps, a million reissues. It, what's great about this, this has alternate versions because the Stones were recording these things in different studios. So there's alternate versions, alternate uh, B-sides as well. There's a great version of Out of Time here with uh, orchestration, more background singers, and it's kind of a cool version. There's a version of Memo and Turner here the Stones tried, and it's nowhere near as good as the Memo Turner that Mick Jagger sings and Ry Cooter plays on guitar from the performance soundtrack. That one with Ry's bottleneck uh, guitar just kicks ass over this one. This one's sort of a, a mediocre version of it, of Memo for Turner, but there's some fun stuff. I like this record. This record is a really good listen, so I give it uh, kudos here. Uh, before I go on to the other ones, let me show you the records I don't have. T 2012, the Rolling Stones did a, a comp with many versions. Of course, we're in a CD era, vinyl era, hasn't had the big rebirth, uh, streaming era, but grr. This is the sort of the 50th anniversary of the Rolling Stones. Uh, this was a huge, massive collection. There was a big version, different packaging. Again, I'm not all in with the Stones. There was Honk. <laughs> from 2019, and this is a 1969 to 2019 uh, collection. And there was a, actually a deluxe collection, that expanded version of it, which another way to get you when you're an all-in person to rebuy everything. In 1972, APCO put out this one, Milestones. I've never had this. And this is one of those reactionary uh, videos that APCO put out. Uh, when the Stones left APCO for uh, Atlantic Records and their own custom label. Uh, this was a UK release only. Jump Back was a 1993 release. Uh, Virgin, when they signed to Virgin and all their catalog, their later catalog, their Atlantic catalog went to Virgin. Uh, this was the comp, kind of a, like an intro to their best of. So yet another way to buy you the same shit over and over again. 1972 Rock and Rollin' Stones, yet another comp. I think there's like five Chuck Berry songs on it. So it's really a rockin' uh, record. Again, another DECA kind of APCO release. Uh, another way to buy you records you already have. If you're a Stones completist, you have to buy it. Obviously, the different cover makes a difference. Uh, this was a UK only comp. In 1975, I believe UK only uh, is Roll Gold. This was a double album. I used to have this record, and when I did my purge, I traded it in because, uh, again, it was repeated. The very best of the Rolling Stones. Yet again, you're buying all this stuff. There again. Uh, it was expanded in 2007 with a different cover for a compact disc. More tracks added. And this is uh, 1979, and this is Time Waits for No One. This is uh, 1971 and 1977 tracks. Again, a UK only comp, uh, comp. This is the only comp I don't recall ever seeing. I don't think, obviously, since I haven't seen it, I've never owned it. Uh, again, let's move on to Made in the Shade. I like this comp. Now this is um, 1975. This is the first comp uh, they put out on Atlantic Records in 75. And this covers uh, Sticky Fingers, Exile, Goat's Head Soup, and uh, Rock and Roll. Uh, it's only Rock and Roll, but I like it. And this is a cool comp. This is a fun comp. 
then we have uh, this one, which I kind of like this one too. I mean, again, I don't dislike any of these, but it's just the thing. Oh God, yet another Rolling Stones comp. How many comps? I, you know, Bowie's done a bunch of comps when he's changed labels. Elvis Costello has comps. I can't imagine. And if, if there are other artists who have more comps than the Rolling Stones, please tell me down in the comments below. Uh, this was great because this is from 1981. And I like this just because of the concept. It's like, basically, screw you. We're sucking in the 70s. I love that, right? Suck in the 70s. And then there's a hype sticker telling you uh, what you don't have, so you have to buy it again. Actually, what's interesting about this, it had some uh, B-sides, and it has some live versions of the track, so it actually works pretty well. But sucking in the 70s, what a great, great uh, you know, it takes a stab at the humor of it in a, in a, in a way. So uh, the Rolling Stones comp, sucking in the 70s. And then in 1984, there was Rewind. And this is um, 1971 to 1984. Again, the Atlantic years, another way to sell you the same shit over and over and over again. Is there anything new on here? Uh, Angie, waiting on a friend, fool to cry, beast of burden, emotional rescue. Produced by the Glimmer Twins, of course. But this came on uh, also aligned with a video version. There was a video of their uh, videos of these songs, Rewind. So Rolling Stones. So think about it. All these records, all these repackages. Didn't Morrissey say it once of the uh, dead artist, repackage, rebackage, put extra tracks on. I'm paraphrasing, not getting the song right. Um, great song. Oh, and of course, you know, there's... Rolling Stones 40 licks. And lastly, I'm gonna end up with a compact disc. This is a three CD collection. It did come out on four LPs and I don't have it. And this is really actually good. This is the London years. This is the singles collection, the Rolling Stones London years, has A and B sides of every song. So a lot of stuff that I you don't have on the other albums if you're an album purist and you never bought the singles. I believe this is all a mono. Again, I don't have the 4LP version, but I adore this set. This is amongst my favorites of all of these because this period is the killer period of Rolling Stones singles and 45s. And I believe these are all the mono mixes. So uh, that's the Rolling Stones. That's the way the artists get you to buy the same shit over and over and over again. So thanks for watching. If I missed any comps, and I probably did, there's probably 10 others I don't even know about. Put them in the comments below and tell me the other bands that have more comps than the Rolling Stones. Not live things, but comps. Mazzy loves you. See you next time.